So this is a very interesting book that they have related to three issues. And look what they are speaking about, called the Plug-in Manager. It's speaking about people, technology, and the organization. So the main focus here for our you know, topic today, are your managers plugged in? What's the meaning plugged in? Are they really working, engaged inside the organization because of the technology that you are implementing? Or they are saying, no, 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 we don't want to be plugged in, we are plugged out. We don't want to touch the technology, we don't want to communicate with people, we don't want to engage because we feel this is not the appropriate solution for us to do. And when we speak about plug in and plug out, we speak about three issues. Why they are speaking about people, technology, and organization? Because for you as HR professionals, the second they speak about technology, you say, what kind of solution, what kind of features, What's, what problem are we solving? You know? And this is completely the wrong way of thinking about it. Why is that? Before we speak about the solution and the technology, we need to focus on the people. Who are these people in the organization? Are they old, young, what behavior they have, what preferences they have, and based on it, I need to understand what kind of technology can fit with the organization other than the solution that is going to bring to the, uh, you know, to the workplace. At the same time, what kind of organizational structure we have to make sure that this technology will fit with these people and at the same time will be a good mix for the organizational uh, structure that we have. So the culture of the people and the structure of the organization are important factors for us to consider other than the benefits and the future of this technology and what can bring to the world. And the whole topic that we are going to go over today is about how can we put all these three elements together for us to be able to make them work in an effective way. Before we do this, let's see you know, a, a video that will explain exactly what is happening currently in our workplace. Karen's presentation was so boring. I can't believe it. Let's go. We can hear you. Need any help? No. One second. Press video. Happy birthday to. Sorry. Oh, installed new modem today, huh? Sweet. <laughs> Hey, modem. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I got this. You know what? There's, just, there's usually, I think there's a button on well, the thing. I can just, yeah, I'll just. We'll just come over to the collaborative space here. Um, rock, paper, scissors? In uh, June, uh, when uh, we anticipate that, that July. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, great. All right, uh, so down to business. Getting internet. You do. Well, it should be connected. Just well, press the button. Yeah. Tyler, you illustrated it perfectly. If I could just plug in, is, it, is there, I need a USB in uh, on this thing. Is that uh, is that a six? That's a six port. That's the wrong one. Uh, no, no, no. Tyler, I'm missing a file. Ah. Just a sec. I'm installing the new modem. So what happened here when we look you know, at organizations, they are just trying to understand how they can plug in with these technologies before they plug in with the organization, right? So we need to be able to create technology and solutions that's easy for people to use. It's not about IT, it's not about the information technology, it's about any kind of technology. What kind of work environment are you creating for your employees for them to collaborate together? Are they sitting in cubes? Or are they sitting in a really collaborative work environment that will allow them to innovate, to think, you know, to connect together, to, in, to, to engage with each other? So this is the, you know, the, the thing about technology. It's about implementing something that will achieve the results that you need. It's not about doing something to solve a problem that you have. So focusing on the problem will just get you a solution to fix it, but focusing on the objective of the organization will help you in getting the right solution that you need. So look, this is what happened to our workplace. 
we start designing everything, and after that, we put everything in perspective, and this is what will happen. This is the workflow. The processes that we have in our organizations are not the most appropriate processes for a human to interact with each other. And now, we need to understand how we solve it. So let's give you an example. What do you do, most of you? You are most of you in HR, right? So please tell me, what do you do? On a daily basis, what kind of responsibility do you have? So from the audience. Anyone? Hire people. Hiring, okay. Other than that? Performance evaluation. Performance evaluation, other than that? Counseling. Counseling. <laughs> other than that, HR professional, what kind of uh, responsibility do you have? Training and development. Training and development. Organization and development. Other than that? Compensation. Exactly. And for all these tasks that you need to do, you need to have a technology for them, you know, for, for you to be able to use this technology to support your operation. So what will happen? You have all these you know, ideas that you are trying to work on, and now you need to have this technology to support it. And after that, you implement SAB, and you implement this, and the solution, and you buy it, and you integrate it, and you do all this work. And now you say, OK, it's amazing. But for, but for the guys who are doing the work, they'll be like, oh my god, I need to do this performance report using this system, and after that I need to use that system. And there is a deadline, so we need to meet together on this deadline. Doesn't care, I don't care about if you are working or not, they need the performance management by this time or the system will close. And for the conversation, we need to enter it even if we don't have the number. And now we make our life very complicated because we implement a technological solution, and now we do our workplace, make it fit with this technology solution for us to be able to operate. And that's the biggest issue. That rather than you know, creating the right mass structure and bringing IT to support what we need to achieve as a human you know, resource, I don't like to use resources as a human capital, right? In the organization, for them to grow and you know, evolve, what we are doing, we are just putting all these technologies and enforcing all these technologies on them. And now they need to deal with it. So what they say, they say we are plugged out. We don't care. We will do whatever we want, but we don't want to be involved. We don't want to be engaged. We don't want to contribute. Because this is, you know, making our life difficult. And this is what we need to understand as HR. You are part of the strategy of the organization. And you need to make IT understand that it's not about what kind of solution we need to do to be able to accomplish our goal, but it's about creating a process that will support our objectives and create a really nice work environment, and after that, getting the IT solution to be able to support this process. So this is a very important point for us to achieve. Look how they hire at IKEA. Right? Make a chair and take a seat. <laughs> so they are trying to focus on the technical skills of the person. If you have the technical skills, you'll be able to get the job. But this is the past. This is not happening anymore. And why is that? It's not about the employee's ability to be able to perform on the job. You know, currently, how many qualified candidates you get? A lot. So it's about, is this person is a good fit for the culture of the organization? Is this person is a good, you know, for whatever environment you are creating? Is he going to add something? Is he against, you know, the current culture, so that way you are creating different culture, and you are trying to, you know, get new, new blood into the organization? So you need to understand now, when you are trying to hire a person, that using such a system, you know, when we, we are speaking about hiring and you say, oh, I have an amazing online system, the candidate will fill up the application and the system will filter them for me so I don't have to look at their information. <laughs> and now the candidates, they can't enter any information. Yeah, you want five years experience? I can put seven. Right? And I can tell you, yeah, I got here experience, I worked as an assistant, but that was HR, you know, I was part of HR and they can enter whatever information they want. And when we speak about years of experience, someone will say, oh, I have seven years of experience. He was sitting you know, behind us for seven years. But do we know if he was doing anything or not? We don't know. Maybe two years experience is much better than 20 years of experience because this guy was working actually, the other guy was just sitting doing nothing. So all these you know, systems that we got to solve a problem that, okay, we don't need to communicate with all these candidates for us to hire them, but we make the system do the filtering for us and after that we get the filters and we select between them. This is not the most appropriate way, especially for HR, where you need to interact with the person and understand who is this person. And you come and tell me, okay, so what is the most creative idea to do this? Where social media or other platforms where you create competition, where you create games, where you make people you know, interact with certain system and prove that they have the ability and way of thinking 
for them to be able to say, okay, look, these are the things that we will do in certain situations, so it's like a simulation, and based on that, you do some evaluation. It's more effective approach rather than make them put all these, you know, demographics and whatever other things, and after do psychological testing, and after that, say, okay, this is the appropriate person for us. So you need to understand what kind of system you need to implement for you to be able to do something and hire the right person. This is, at the same time, it's important. Look what will happen inside your organization. These are the people who are working inside your organization. And the good thing, that they are different, right? So in that way, we can't find a system that will fit all of them. We have this guy, he's like for 30 years, and he's like, oh, please, no new solution. And we got, you know, this guy, he's like, okay, what kind of new solution? This is really cool. Why are we still using this solution 20 years ago? And you have other people, they say, no, we think this way. We say, oh, I don't like to do that. We, I'd like to deal with, uh, with the, you know, um, Mac, Mac, right? Other people, no, I like Windows. And now we need people with Android. And you are having all this conflict between the people who are working in the organization. <coughs> So how can you really implement the IT solution that will meet the demand of all these people? So IT is not about implementing a solution anymore that will solve the issue, but about the preferences of these people who are working and how they want to use it. Some people, they say, oh, you know, I would like to go and use you know, SMS for me to send information to other employees and speak with them. Other people, oh, I would like to pick up the call, the phone and call someone. But the other person, they don't like to speak on the phone. They like to send an email. So we are implementing all this technology inside our organization to make people connect, but we are leaving people inside our organization for themselves to communicate and understand how they need to connect with each other, and that's creating a big mess. Rather than understanding what kind of people, what kind of culture we have, and based on it, creating the right communication technology to support that process. So this is a really important thing. Understanding what kind of employees you have inside your organization, this is a priority before you implement any kind of solution. And look what will happen. When we speak about implementing a solution, we say we want to implement a solution that will do three things. And these things are really important. It will cut time, it will save cost, and it will, it will improve quality. So we are saying, okay, it looks at our operation, we are operating in a bank, and it looks like we have a huge line. So we need to implement something, a process, an IT system, something that will help us in doing this. So let's find the most effective one that will cut the uh, cost and you know, make the process faster, and at the same way we, we will give us good quality. But the issue that we forget about implementing any kind of solution is what? Are the other three elements, which is this, technical, behavior, and culture. We forget something really important. We implement this amazing solution that we think about, and we get the employees to, to do some training, and they don't really understand how to use it. Why? Because we invest so much money on this technology, and we invest so much little money on the training, so they end up not understanding how should I operate this, so that way they don't use it. They're like, oh, no, I don't understand. Let me get back to the manual way of doing it. Because they don't understand what is the purpose of this technology. Why are we investing all this money in this technology? So this is the first element. The second element, behavior. Well, they got all the training, they know they are expert. They got even certification, right? Some of the programs, they give you certification. So you're like, oh, I'm certified in Bloomberg or any other platform that I'm using. Amazing. Now, they don't want to use it. They're like, okay, I'm certified, I know. But I really don't want to. Let me go back to my old group. Because I don't have the motivation to do it. So see, it's all about not just, you know, the knowledge. It's about the motivation. Are you pushing them and giving them motives to, for them to do this or not? Now, the third element is about the culture. So they are experts and they want to do it. But what will happen? They do it in their own way. Why? Because they think, okay, I think they should do it this way. Because in the culture, in the older process, for you to do something, you need to go this and do this and do this. Now we implemented technology to make it faster. But no, in our culture, we still think, oh, now we need to do this and we need to do this. So we use the new technology to you know, adapt the older processes so we don't um, improve. And this is what will happen. You need to change their way of thinking, not just about the technology, but about how they are going to use this technology to accomplish the job that they need. So you need to change their culture. By changing the IT, we'll be able to make them use the system to achieve the objective that you need. So these three elements are really important for you as, as HR, when they are implementing a new solution to tell them, look, it's not about just the IT solution and understanding what it's going to bring, but about these people and their ability to adapt it and work on it. And look what happened. When we implement a, a solution, 
we have different organization structures, right? So before we have just one structure, one hierarchy, the guy on the top and everyone down. But look what happened. Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Oracle, they have different organization structures. So in that way, they need to implement it differently. How Apple is doing innovation? Because they don't have the traditional structure. How Facebook is coming with the new products because they have different organization structure. So how are we going to implement a solution without looking at the structure first? Because the structure will determine exactly how this solution will fit with this organization to make sure that people are connected, not you know, isolated. They are plugged in, not plugged out. So this is, you know, this is really important for us to look at. And look what will happen. This is the CEO. He's saying, what we need in this organization is more personal contact. And he's delivering the message over TV. <laughs> right? This is exactly what will happen with the top management. They say, we want to implement the solution. It's really important. And for them, say, OK, but I'm not going to be involved in this system. You do the reports and everything and bring me everything. I don't want even to deal with this system. So they communicate the message that, okay, these are the right solution, but they say, no, we don't want to use them. So how important for the top management to be engaged and at the same time lead by example? This is a very important element for them to be able to show that they are supporting the objectives and they are involved in the process. So this is another element that's really important. And look what will happen. They say, yes, you have done an excellent job of keeping our computer safe. But sooner or later, you will have to plug it in. <laughs> right? And this is what happened. You have a, a person, a manager, a director in your organization. He's trying his best to be plugged out. Because he doesn't want to deal with this. So what will happen? Whatever a project will come, he's a part of the team. We say, who would like to work on this? Not, not me. This person, this person, this person is trying to be out. But at one point, he's going to be involved. When he's involved, he's trying his best to be out of whatever happened. Because he will feel that whatever you are doing is not good for him. Why? Because he's feeling that this is not related to what he's doing. It's completely different. He's making his life complicated and he wants to be out. So how can you make people really say, I want to party. I want. I want. Rather than say, no, another solution, please don't send me to the train. Send another one else. So this is a really important thing for you to focus inside the organization. How can you make people motivated to be part of the new change? You know, like Michael said, rather than being away, they are trying to run away from the change. And they are even resisting this change. So at the same time, look what will happen. Sometimes you, as an organization, make these people feel that it's like a trap. Do you, would you like to be plugged in? Yes. Once you are plugged in, you are plugged in forever. So in that way, you know, who in the team would like to be responsible for handling these reports from the, you know, the purchasing department to the marketing department? Me. Yes, so now you are responsible for the sub application, and now you need to deal with all these issues. And the rest of the team, oh, thank God, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm safe now. I, I don't have to stay in the office until 8 in the evening because there are issues with the report, and I need to fix them, right? Yeah. So when you show people that you know, being plugged in, it's just a way for, uh, for you to put them you know, there and now they need to do the job. They don't want to be plugged. They just want to run away from it. So it's all about how are you communicating this process. What is their perspective about being you know, part of your technology inside your organization? And sometimes we feel like this, right? <laughs> we feel we are so much plugged in on our Blackberry. You know, we are getting a message and another phone call and an email. And after that, someone is sending us you know, some letters that we need to handle. And the fact is, and you feel like, I just don't want to be plugged in at all. You know, I just want to be offline. Right? And what will happen? On top of all this, some organization will say, you know, we are innovative. We would like to implement what? Facebook, Twitter, and Google Chat. And we want to implement other kind of solutions. And this is what will happen. Right. People are like, oh my god, I'm like in the middle of New York, it's really noisy here and I have no idea what's happening. Every, all, I have all the messages, I'm using my internal board, board, board cell, and I have all the messages and the discussion and the replies and I need to do this and I have the other performance and alert and alert and I was like, what should I do? My attention is out. Because every five minutes I need to reply to someone and I need to do something and I have no idea how I'm going to accomplish this job that I'm going to do. This is what happened in our life. Because 
what they focus on, most of the organization is what? What kind of technology, Facebook or, or, or uh, SMS or email or Twitter that we are going to implement in our organization to make everyone collaborate together? And this implement this, yeah, this is sound good. You, YouTube, yeah, put some videos for people and the HR, right? Put some videos to hire new employees and let's make, create a Facebook for us to tell them and so take some photos and let's do this and let's do that. And everything is getting in the mess. Why? Because we are focusing on the solutions. Focusing on the tools, focusing on the platforms, rather than what? Rather than focusing on the strategies. See, tactics, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they are just tools that will accomplish a strategy. But what you need to focus on the strategy. What kind of strategy are you implementing? This is what is important. What are you trying to achieve by implementing a technology? That's important. Once you define that, once you understand exactly what is the strategy, what is the objective? It's really easy to use many tools. There are many tools and there are many ways. And we don't even care about the tools. You are not a technical person. You, from HR standpoint, you need to define the strategy and the objective. And you can send it to the IT people to find the solution for it. But if you say to the IT people, okay, we want to do this, and you don't define the strategy and the objective, they are going to just focus on what kind of technology they need to do and just implement whatever without understanding what is uh, do you know the objective that you are trying to achieve? This is a really important thing. Not just looking at this, but at the same time looking at this. And what is this? When we are living in the world, there are something really interesting. Before, we are human. So each person is really interacting with another person in a really traditional way. I say hi, you say hi, you will reply, and I, I say hi, he was, he's shy, he's like, mm -hmm, hey, how are you? Then the other say, hey. so each person got his personality. But when the internet came, everything changed. Why? Because this person that you see shy, he's not talking with you. Go see him on the internet. He's like, on Twitter, on YouTube, speak all the time, you know, and doing all these crazy things. You know, and he's like, you see on his profile, he's Superman, and he's doing this. And the other person that you see in the real life, in social life, speaking and everything, he's like, on Facebook, just hardly you know, posting any information. So in online world, we have completely different personality than our offline personality. This is the real personality that sometimes we don't show because we are afraid of direct you know, connection with the humans. But over the internet, there are the humans far away from us, so we can be plugged in. Look how nice the technology. Technology, when people will feel it's not, no one is watching them. You know, they can be plugged in because they can do all this crazy stuff. But when they see, okay, people are in, in, around them, they just want to be safe. So this is what happens when we think about social media, when we think about any kind of technology you are going to bring. And here it comes to something really important. What kind of profile we have for these people who are working in the online world? So this is based on Groundswell, which is a study from Harvard Business School that will say that we have different social technographics for each person of us in the room. And what are they? So the first one, we call it creator. So these are the people who are creators. So these people, what they do? They publish blogs, they publish their own web pages, they create videos, they create audios, they write articles. So these are the people who are trying to share knowledge. They say, oh, I have so many ideas in my head. And I would like to share, I would like to share, I would like to write, do videos, take pictures. So these are the people who would like to share. And you have them inside your organization. Mm -hmm. Are you giving them the platform to do it? Or are you saying, everyone should share the information? And people are like, oh, I don't want to share. <laughs> right? And the people, other people say, I'd like to share, but there is no platform for them to do this. So see, this is where we understand people. Now let's get to the second one. What about critics? These people, they don't like to share. They just like to critique, right? So these people, when you see them on Facebook, they don't do anything, just say, like, dislike, like, dislike, like. <laughs> like, this is what they do. They just, okay, this guy wrote an article. Okay, like, done. <laughs> so see, these are the people who, who would like just to, you know, to provide their opinion. And these are the people who will, who will see you know, uh, a book, and after that, you know, they will do a rating. Okay, let me read this book. Let me do this. Let me do, you know, they, they would like to provide their opinion, but they don't like to share you know, anything other than provide opinion, critique, stuff around them. Now, what other people we have? We have collectors. These people, what they like to do? These people are on Twitter. They collect. This guy said this, oh, yeah, no, said this. this guy said, this. let me retweet, 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 retweet. Collect all this information and just you know, send it around. 
So they are just collecting all this information. They love to collect it. And they love to share their own. So they are not creating any content, but rather they are taking all this content and taking these critiques. Oh, he, he liked it. Yes, he liked it. So they will just, you know, collect all this information around. We have different people here who are joiners. So these people, they are very interesting. So this pe person will say, like your Facebook page, and he's just looking at it. Okay, what's your said? He's not going to say like, not like. You would see it. For that, you see so many pages. You know, you see 700 people looked at this post, but just five said like. What about this? They said, just look at it. I'm not going to say anything. So these are the people who, who are joining the conversation. They join the group. If you go to their LinkedIn, they join like 50 groups. But you see, they never posted one thing. They just show, they look at, you know, you see them around, they are just quiet looking at everything. And you have them inside your organization. Now what about, you know, number five? Speculators. So these people, they, and, and what they do? Uh, uh, sorry, spectators. So these people, spectators, what they do? They read a blog, they listen to, uh, to a broadcast, they watch a video, they read online, but they don't join. So these people are like, oh, there's a group. No, 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 I don't want to join. I just look at it from far away. Yes, that's nice what you are doing, and I just move on. You know? I see a video, I just see this video, and I don't want even to subscribe to the, look at it again. I will read an article, I don't, I don't want to subscribe to a magazine. Not a blog. I just want to go from far away, look at everything happening. So these are you know, completely different people, and these are inside your organization. These are the people who are going around, reading all this information happening, but they don't want even to join any group. They just want to be far away. And we have other people who are inactive, right? They just don't want to see anything, or they create Facebook account or Twitter or anything. So if you have these six personalities inside your organization, how are you going to create a solution that will meet their needs? This is the question. Before you do this, you need to understand, you know, who are they? How many in your organization, you know, they, they are creators, critiques, joiners? Because if all the employees in your organization are creators, you know, all of them will create, and no one will read anything, because everyone is creating. Mm -hmm. Or the opposite, if all of them, they are just, you know, joiners, so they join, and no one is creating any content, so no one will benefit. So you need to do this. And for us to do this, what we are going to do, we are going to use our voting system. See, that? so here comes, the, uh, the secret of this voting system. So what we are going to do? I'm going to open it. So now you can vote. You have one, two, three, four, five. One creator, two critics, three collector, four joiner, and five speculator, and uh, six inactives. So please, no one will know your answer. Vote. Which kind of personality are you? Sometimes you say, I have more than one personality, but one more likely to be the dominant one. So I'm going to give you one minute. If you don't vote, so definitely you are inactive, because you don't even want to participate. <laughs> Just you no. push the number, you vote, and after that you push okay. If you change your opinion, you can bring a vote again. If you are not sure, you can ask a friend. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you another two seconds. Okay, so let's see the results. So I'm going to stop it so no one will change after. Okay, that's what I see there's Interesting, interesting. Look, this room is a very active room. We have eight of you creators. So that's great. So tomorrow I'm expecting you know, many blogs about my presentation, right? <laughs> Some of you are here, you know, we have two you know, critiques. So this part of the presentation say, you know, you know, you know, we have this, you know, comment. When we have three, they are collectors. So you know. These people you will see more likely they are trying to write down you know, some of the information they'd like to, to, to keep it with them. And we have some of you are joiners, so we have we have just one joiner. So thank you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> and we have three that are spectators. So the, you know these people they, they came but they are quiet, you know, they, they just you know looking around, making sure 
and they get whatever they need. They don't want to talk with anyone. After the event, they are just going to leave. So in that way, <laughs> making sure no one saw them at any presentation. And thank God we don't have anyone who's not uh, inactive. That's good. That's good. Yeah, they wouldn't vote, right? Yeah, or they didn't vote. I am one of these two options, so I, I, I'm not sure. But see, this is what we need to do inside your organization to understand exactly what kind of you know, uh, social profiles you have so that way you create the system that's suitable for this. And once you do this, you say, okay, for creators, this is the system for you, go and create. And for people who would like to collect co and collect this information, share it with the rest of the people. And for people who would like you know, to critique, critique this information and give us your opinion. So that way you'll be able to work with people based on their preferences. It's all about creating a work environment where you respect my thinking, so that way I am plugged in. Because if I think this way, and you think this way, I'm not plugged in. But if you think my way, yes, for sure I want to do it. So how can you give the people inside the organization the freedom to do whatever they feel they want to do, using the technology? See, before you technology, they can do whatever they do or not based on the work environment. But now we are speaking about technology. So allow technology to facilitate the process of being part of the operation rather than being you know, out of the operation. So this is a really important point. Okay, let's take this out, let's take this out. So now we are going to go over a video that will show you exactly how a company in the US did this. In a very nice way for them to be able to use social media as a way for them to be able to connect with their customers and to connect all the workers and all the knowledge between the workers, you know, to create a really huge impact. Best Buy has always been the undisputed tech expert, but their key asset, the knowledge of the blue shirts and Geek Squad agents, was confined to their stores. So if people never came in, how would they ever know what they were missing? So Best Buy decided to launch a tool that could extend the knowledge of their geeks and blue shirts beyond their walls and out into the digital space. Meet the Twelp Force, a modern, digitized volunteer army of Best Buy employees available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on Twitter. And not to push products or increase sales, but to provide Twelp, a fancy new term for expert technical help in tweet form. If you have a question, simply tweet at Twelve Force and get an answer fast. In fact, for every question tweeted, over 2,000 blue shirts are racing to give the fastest and bestest answer. And you got answers from real Best Buy employees, not from some call center an ocean away. And no questions are out of bounds. No questions are too ridiculous. No questions are ignored. Plus. The collective power of Twelve Force is always watching for tech issue tweets and can quickly lend a hand, even without anyone asking. Since the launch, Twelve Force has answered thousands and thousands of tweets and is building momentum for Best Buy as a brand that not only knows tech, but lives it as well. So when we do something like this, what usually will happen? The legal department will come, wait, wait a second, we need to implement certain policies for social media because what kind of information are we sharing and we are allowing everyone to share. And you know, the managers, they are saying, we are afraid that this information that they are going to share are confidential and that's going to create some issues. And you know, the IT people will say there are an issue here for IT if they are using from house and which device. And you get to do all these issues and people will like, okay, okay, let's not just do this. It's much better to stop. But having corporate governance would really help by implementing a simple social media policy. Is it for your organization, so for your employees, or is it for your customers on what they can share or they can't on your social media platform? And this is what happened. It's a very simple one. Look at Best Buy, what they did. They say, our policy is very simple. Best Buy social media policy. Be smart, be respectful, and be human, right? Not machines dealing with people. So in that way, saying what you should do and what you should not. What you should do, disclose your affiliation, state that this is your personal opinion, and act respectfully and ethically. That's it. Very simple. What you should not do, you should not reveal the numbers, how many items you have in the store. You should you know, not you know, provide any personal information or anything belong to someone else. You know? If the lady say, okay, where is my iPhone? So you say, oh, your husband just bought it for you. So, you know, so be, be careful about the information that you are going to share. And after that, you know what kind of confidential information you are going to share? And what happened? They show you the result. Just in case, you know, 
something happen and you ignore the guideline, what can happen? You can be get you can get fired, get best by legal action, or cost us the ability to keep our customers. It's a very direct way for us as HR to put a policy that will make people understand what they should do, what they should not do, and what are the consequences. The same thing we can do for Facebook, right? But don't prohibit Facebook inside your organization, because like Michael said, you know, anyone can get a device and they can use it. So are you prohibiting people from doing something, or are you enabling them to do something that will benefit the organization in a really smart way? And putting some policy to make sure that that's driving the organization rather than blocking people from being able to do something. This is really important. Now we are going to move to something really interesting. What is the future of our workplace? So do you know, we said all oh, we have all these issues with IT and all these problems. Now, what kind of future are we going to look at? And why are we speaking about the future? Because we are always thinking when technology will come, technology is going to bring a brighter future to our organization. But actually, it's doing the opposite, right? More technology, we have, oh my God, more, you know, more issues. But when we think about the future, it's not about the technology. It's what kind of future organizations are we trying to create? What kind of work environment and workspaces are we trying to create inside our organization to be able to be more effective, more dynamic, meet the demand of the market? So these are the issues that we are looking at. So let's see this short video. I'm T.A. McCann, and I'm an entrepreneur. The future of business is going to be people interacting in more than just one job. That line is very blurry between what's my work and what's my help and what's my community sort of involvement. Do you work nine to five? Absolutely not. Are you working all the time? Absolutely not. The blend of when am I working and when am I playing and when am I socializing, that's all gone. There is no line between those things. The new work style is never retiring because if you're working on what you want to work on, why would you ever want to retire? So I think another aspect of the future of work is that, that people will move in between jobs at a much more rapid rate. They'll move in, they'll deliver their, their best effort, and then they'll move on to the next thing where they can deliver their best effort. And that will happen at a faster and faster and faster rate. Uh, as opposed to people working at the same company for 30 years, working in the same job for 30 years, working with the same people for 30 years. It's just not the future of work. Part of the new work style is the fact that the ability for you to create connections with people that you don't otherwise know exists much more now than it ever has. And the tools to discover other people and discover people and what they're all about exist now more than they ever have. Finding people that you share some common goal or some common outcome or some way that you want to work on something together, whether that's helping them or them helping you or both, that's, that's interesting. That's connecting. That's creating a relationship. That's the part that's exciting. So the future of work is always learning. The future of work is always trying to do something for someone else, not do something for yourself. That leads to relationships, and that leads to more opportunities. Right, this is the future of work that we are looking at. And the question is, are you going toward the future inside your organization? Are you implementing strategies that will focus on the future? The future is all about relationship. How can we make these people implement this relationship and build the trust so they can drive the company forward, rather than you know, solve all this issue and connect it between them. How they can share the same vision, right? It's all about sharing the same vision for them to be able to drive the organization, rather than having their own vision and their own direction. And we can see so many trends happening in the market. We need to look at these trends, because it's affecting how the work environment is happening. At the same time, it's affecting the new economy, right? In the new economy, we are operating completely differently than in the old economy. So let's see what happened, what is happening currently in the world. So this is what we can see currently happening, right? The old generation is handling everything to the new generation. So the meaning of whatever you are doing and creating currently in the organization, for all these new generations that you are dealing with, sooner or later, is, you are going to be dealing with this new generation. 
And whenever you are blocking down now from Facebook and using all these tools, this is not going to work because they are going to take control in, in the very soon future, right? In one year, in five years, ten years, it depends on your organization. So are you enabling them to be able to do it? Or are you blocking them so that once they take control, they will reinvent the organization, re-engineer everything? Or are, are you doing the right way of transition and change inside your organization? To be able to handle, you know, this a huge responsibility to the new generation in the right way. Because when we look at the old generation, they have their own way of thinking about the business. But when we look at the new generation, this is what they have. They think that they own the world. See, it's a completely different perspective. It's our world. You know, in our old generation, we feel like, oh my God, we are part of the world, we are sovereign, what can we do? In the new generation, they think, this is the world, it's us. We own the world, we can do anything we want. So how are we going to deal with their way of thinking? And when I'm saying, what, what's the name they own the world? They decide. They make decisions. If they don't like what you are doing, if, you, if they don't like your working hours, they quit. If they don't like your working style, they quit. They don't care anymore about the money. They change some fundamental issues in HR. Why? Because it's not for them about you know all these issues that we spoke about safety and you know you know recognition. No, they have different issues. They have different fundamentals and principles they are operating based on. And we, for that we need to understand. Them. So what they need, the question is what they need, and this is what they need, right? This is what they need. They need to go to the beach, sit down, and do their work. They don't want to come to the office and sit down in a cubicle from nine to five for the whole week, that's boring. They want to be on a flight and do their work. They want to be sitting in a coffee shop with their friend and do their work. They want to do it in the middle of the night. They want to sleep the whole day. This is the new generation. It's up to them when they are plugged in, and it's up to them when they are plugged out. It's not you force them. You need to plug in from this time. You need to plug in on this. No, they be plugged in on whatever they like, and in any time they like, and wherever they like. So this is the new generation. So are you creating the technology that will support this workplace or not? When we see big organizations like Google and Apple and they are working on creating a work environment where employees they can come and leave and do whatever they want and they spend 20% of their time thinking about you know, what should they should do. When we see some organizations like Chinese organizations, they allow their employees to have certain preferences like you know, having an app during the day because this is something they like. When we allow you know, some airline companies to allow that, uh, you know, the, uh, all these uh, you know, flight attendants to what to select, do, would they like to fly in the morning or in the evening? Or which region? Some of them they would like to go with the Asian region, some would like Latin America. So when we give preferences to people inside our organization and we create a system and technology that will support this, now they are plugged in. For me, if I work inside your organization, give me preferences. Tell me that for my work schedule, I would like to work in the evening or the morning, or tell me what are my options, and give me a system that will help me manage this, so I am more plugged in. I would like to have you know, choices and make choices. So in that way, I decide how I'm going to work with your organization and how I'm going to be plugged in, in my own time, in my own tool. You know, an example that happened in my organization when I was working in US. So, Organ people inside the organization, they were communicating with each other, some of them using Skype, some of them you know, using uh, uh, Google to chat, and they, if I have an issue, I, I know him, so I connect with him, I ask him some questions, I connect with you in different tools, I ask some questions. So they said, this is an amazing way of collaboration, so what we need to do, let's create our internal communication system, and make sure that everyone, when they are in, we know that they are in, when they are out, we know they are out, so that way we communicate with them when they are in, so that way when they are live, the meaning of it, and after that, what happened? They blocked everywhere. They said, let's block Skype, let's block Gmail, so no one will chat in anything that's not corporate, authorized platform. So this information will not leak outside. So they did this. Do you know what happened? Everyone said, I'm off, I'm off, I'm off, I'm off. So now we can't speak with anyone. And the people who are on, everyone were asking them. They said, okay, I don't want to answer. I have so much stuff to do. So when you go and create informal learning and informal processes and make them formal by implementing technology, you are killing them. Remember, the culture inside your organization is based on, on informal processes that are supported by the people. Don't make them for, formal by implementing technology. 
This is sometimes it's not the most appropriate solution. And look what happened to the new generation. They are deciding what kind of network they are creating using this technology. So you see how they are connected online. You see that when they get an email from this lady, they are not answering. Or when they get a message from this, they are going and speaking with another person, connecting with, sharing this information, coming back. So there are, you know, you know uh, let's say, information technology networks inside the organization different than our you know, social network, and it's driving how the work is happening. By understanding these connections, understanding who, who are the people who are influencing the decisions, what kind of politics happening there, it's really, you know, that will help you understand how technology can be implemented inside the organization. How people are connected with each other inside the organization. And how can that happen? So the book will speak about, you know, three things that is really important for us to think about. The first one is stop, look, and listen. So what's the concept here behind it? First, we need to stop doing whatever we are doing. Thinking about, you know, how we can integrate and how can we bring new solutions. Stop for a second. Stop that. Stop everything. And what we need to do, we need to look. Let's look at the operation. Let's see how it's happening. You know, what kind of process is happening? What kind of culture we have? So we see. And after that, after we look at it, we listen. So we look at something happening like this. And we ask her, why is this happening like this? You say, oh, it's happening all the time like that. I complain so many times. This is not the most appropriate way because we think this, this, this should be happening. But because of the technology that we have, we are forced to do it this way. And I would ask the customer, say, yeah, I, I hate that. But they say, this is the only way for them to operate. And let me give you an example. Southwest Airline. So Southwest Airline, like any airline, when you want to go on board, they, if you are A, B, C, D, based on that, you go to there. So what will happen? Look, some customers, they would like to be the first. And they are D. But now they need to wait and wait and wait and wait. And when it's D, like, they are just jumping. Other people, they are A, they will like, I am A, but I don't like to board that day. But that's fine, I will board that day. So, you know, like, just uh, an example, I will, I will be sitting, like, for example, for me, I like to board the last one in the floor. You know, it's really easy. So, you know, it's like, I'm business class because everyone is sitting and they just walk and sit down. But my wife will say, no, it's, we are being, it's now, it's our time, let's go on the flight. So, what happened? For us to understand the preferences of people, what happened in, in Southwest Airlines? They say, sorry, we can't help you because the system, if you are you know, business class, you are going to be A. If you are, you know, based on your booking, you are going to be D. They say, why don't we change the system to implement a new process? And what is this process? Based on your preference, if you would like to be first, check out, uh, check into the flight, the first one. So that way you'll be number one, two, three, four, five, six. So they did it by numbers, based on when you check in. If you don't want to, don't check in even. Come to the last one, and that way you put you the last one on the flight. And that way you stand in the lines based on your number, based on your check-in. So even if you, they say, please A board or B board, they have numbers. They have one A, one and two A, so that way they, are, they have numbers and they have orders. People are happy. Oh, I got uh, number A3 because I checked in and this stuff. So no one is complaining. And at the same time, you know, the, the managers, they are happy because people are standing in line. They are not fighting. They are not, you know, no one is standing in, in front of another person because they got the order. So by understanding a process, how humans are interacting, by understanding you know, how the problems happening inside the organizations and getting feedback from the customers and the managers, we were able to re-engineer the process. And look, Southwest Airlines, they have invested so much money to do that, right? To change the way booking is happening, and at the same time to change the system of boarding for it to meet the demand of the market. So it's really important to understand that. This is how you can implement it. You need to stop, look, and listen. What about mixing? We spoke about three elements. Technology, people, and organization. How are you mixing them together in the right way? So in that case, when you implement certain technology, maybe it will fit in one department for certain people based on certain structure. It's not going to fit in the whole department. So understand which kind of technology, with which kind of organizational structure, with which kind of people. It's really important when you mix these three elements together to make sure that it's achieving the goals of the organization. And finally, what about sharing? Are you allowing the people inside your organization to share the information in the right way? Is it about the wiki that you put there? Is it about the, the, the for a Facebook page that you put there? How these information are shared? What kind of method are you implementing? Is this method effective or not? Based at the same time on so many factors. 
So you need to understand how sharing is happening, how learning is happening inside the organization. Because when I'm inside the organization and I have all this knowledge inside my head, or I put them in a document on the wiki in the organization, this is not called sharing. This is just taking what's inside my head, putting it there. But how can you make this knowledge be shared and be learned by other people? What kind of tools? Is it YouTube that I need to record it in YouTube? Is it putting description? Is it creating course? You need to understand based on your organization, how can you make information be shared, not just documented, right? This is a big difference. So these are three approaches for us to be able to move to the new organization and do it inside our organization. And with that, we'll be able to do something really important, which is, look, these are some of the tools that we can use. Inside your team, you know, when people are meeting and they are in teams, they are like, oh my God, we are in teams. You have certain responsibility, I have responsibility, she got responsibility, we don't know this, let's write them down. We have now five pages describing the responsibility and I have no idea what happened with them. And there's a manager to make sure everyone happy and doing this. So they are saying, we are living in the new economy, in the new world. And in the new world, no one would like to read, right? When is the last time you read any book, any report? No. We would like to see, we would like to visualize. So why don't we do something like this, like visual teams, where we have one page, you know, this is another uh, book uh, from Wiley. It's, uh, it's amazing, you know, book will explain to you a very important concept. How can you put all the stuff that's happening in these teams on one page and show the objective? Okay, my responsibility are these responsibilities to achieve the objective. These are my tasks for you to achieve the objective. And what are the objectives? What is the timeline? So that we, we have it there. So everyone will understand what they need to do, what other people they need to do, what's the objective, what's the time, in one page, and we have update on it, rather than having reports. So it's thinking about using technology to support our way of operation, rather than using it to document all this information and make our work very difficult and hard. Now this you are going to laugh at. What about the visual meetings? Like, we get all these meetings and minutes and minutes of meetings, right? And you get this, you're like, oh my god, five pages? What, what are my points? Let me focus on them. I'm not going to even read the rest. I don't care. So how can you create the same thing? One page for you to be able to put all this information in it. So that way you say, oh, it's interesting. When the CEO will get this, he say, oh, it's, look, look something. Wow, it's, you know, guys, you are, you are, I can understand in five minutes what's happening. Compared now, I need to read all these notes that no one will understand, you know, what all these communication, information, and we spend you know, so much time wasting our time doing this. Thinking that this is the most appropriate way when we send 25 people. So by implementing a new way of thinking, focusing on the psychology of these people, and at the same time focusing on the new economy, we'll be able to bring you know, our workplace to the new age. Thank you very much. <laughs>